So we should start with one of this year's most anticipated games, a game called Death Stranding from Hideo Kojima, the guy that was unfortunately let go by Konami and, and invented the Metal Gear series, etc. A, a legend in the industry has come out with his own studio and his own game. As you can see in here, it's not your normal game. It's very self-indulgent and it's extremely story heavy. One of the things I'm gonna promise you on this review are no massive cutscenes or story spoilers. That's one of the reasons this game is gonna be popular is because of its intricate, intelligent and vast story that's laid behind this gameplay. Now let's look at this, let's look at this gameplay for a minute. Hard to imagine it now. As you can see, the Death Stranding poked us full of holes. So let's go sort of chronologically how this game sort of encroaches on you. One of the things I'm noticing with the cutscenes is that you can click in your analog stick and zoom in. It ends up looking like a found footage film if you keep pumping it. It's quite funny. We're also introduced to some big name actors. Del uh, Gilmo Elro Del Torio is in here, the famous director. I'm actually a huge fan of his work. It's weird seeing him in a game with so much dialogue. It's just weird, him having so much dialogue. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I much prefer him behind the camera. But the story opens with you basically getting your first mission. And if you don't know, this game is all about fetch quests. This is one big fetch quest. You are taking something from A to B. That's it. That may sound like an incredibly simple concept, and it really is on paper. But it's what happens between those two points that's interesting with this game. First of my lips, it's clear to me. There's something there. One of your first delivery tasks is an incredibly morbid delivery of a body and you're introduced to the weight mechanics of the game. The game allows you to run fast or at medium pace and actually count a weight and balance what's on your back using the R buttons. Now the first thing you notice is that this game is a Dark Souls online model duplicate. So leaving signs and leaving souls clone style messages around is very common but more importantly you can actually put structures in so i think this game works on a server to server basis where you can be in a server where someone else has put a structure down this particular structure acts as a post box if i found a box i can drop it off here on the fly on my way to and from a mission and this is one of the later stage builds, which is actually a watchtower, which you can go up and look around uh, for vast distances to see what's about and what's going on. Anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? So traversing the steep terrain involves materials and building things involves materials and they are either found or given to you as rewards. You can get to difficult places or make a beeline for a destination in a mission a hell of a lot easier if you're carrying some materials or you've constructed some ladders or ropes or bridges etc. We'll look into that in a bit more detail but it is really awesome to find things that have been knocking around. I I don't know if they're from other players that have dropped them it seems to hint that some of them are and then take that along with you to your destination as a bonus prize to get more materials to then start be able to make more constructions within the world itself one of the things i've got my head around doing is dropping everything and then picking it all up again in size order because that stack's just got to be oh, there's just got to be that ocd in there <sighs> You're also carrying a child, and I don't think it's a human child. It's called BB, and it responds to the various entities that are haunting this particular world, and we will look at that in more detail in a second. But the baby actually requires some sort of maintenance. It will cry, it will respond to you. If you're jumping around and jiggling around, it makes noises. It does actually have expressions on its face. It's pretty goddamn weird. 
One of the things I'm liking is the terrain mapping and how you click a button down and actually get to see the hazardous uh, rankings of each of the terrain that's in front of you. This, there can be deep water. You can see there to the right that it is. So I'm looking for an opening. I'm looking for a gap. I'm also thinking at the back of my mind, I'm going to put a fucking bridge down here as soon as I can because doing this is a ball leg. You can also see that it's asking me to grip both my hands, which makes it a lot more solid and I won't fall over. But you can fall over and you will. And what will happen is the cargo, some of which is integral to finishing the mission, will just bugger off somewhere, fall down a mountain or drift down a hole or God knows what. This bit, although it doesn't look exciting, it was incredibly exciting because I didn't know whether I was going to get this stuff back, whether I had enough stamina to wade back in. And I also got sort of Breath of the Wild vibes with these water mechanics and just how cool it is gathering, collecting, and seeing that physically represented on your, on your body part. Okay, let's get to some slightly more interesting stuff. If you know Kojima, then you know he's a stealth, mechanic, combat, obsessive genius, and that the Metal Gear games all surround amazing combat mechanics and sneaking around and stabbing people in the neck with a knife, completely undetected. It's all, that's what Metal Gear is all about. And I was very much looking forward to those sorts of, of mechanics. And they're, they are in here, but they're not blatant and they're not up in your face. There are people that exist on this, on this plane with you. And they're weird marauder type people. They're not the main enemy, but they certainly do present some problems. My first encounter with them was one of shitting in myself and just basically running for my life. Now you probably noticed that not all is quite right within this world and you, there's no way you could have sidestepped the marketing material about this game and just how goddamn strange it is and how dark and weird the enemies are. You do notice that things are a little bit off from the get-go. The rain itself is, is corrosive. So if you're wearing your gear out, especially the packages, and you're delivering them, and you're in the rain a lot, you're gonna get, it's going to get damaged. There's a percentage on damage on the stuff you take back, and you can see that there's little corrosive metal marks on my packages on my back. That's a really interesting mechanic. But look at all these fish halfway up a mountain. Straight away, your brain is thinking, what the hell is going on? And when it rains, you need to start worrying. The whole postman thing is not lighting my world on fire. The way that these enemies are handled and these encounters are handled is amazing. It's Hollywood style movie scary. And I'm now walking around and that thing on my shoulder is telling me where they are, the most closest direction. So I need to be going opposite, but it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> Tension is great, and when they finally catch up with you, that black ooh and all that goo and all that weird stuff and the screaming, and, and you lose all your all your possessions, you get swept away. It is it's so harrowing. talk about the gameplay loop itself because that's interesting and that's probably what people are struggling to grasp is what is the gameplay loop what is the reward how on earth is this enjoyable this game and doing your errands coming back to base making your small bridges and opening up each different county or chunk of america which is what you're doing you're technically going right to left across the whole of america uplinking everybody on these satellites and what you're doing is you're gradually pulling away layers of this story because it's kind of a bit like lost it, you kind of start with just questions 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 and a lot of them now are starting to be answered for me Music always plays a big part in Kojima's games, and this one's no exception. It's also got some ridiculously daft sponsorship and product placement. I think a lot of that's tongue-in-cheek. 
received a distress call from the distro center staff. Check the order on the delivery terminal as soon as you're ready. I haven't actually spoken about Norman Reedus at all much. He, he totally triumphs in this role. And if you know about PT and the fact that he was in that game and that game disappeared and, oh, my God, you should see the price of a PlayStation 4 that's got the PT demo on it. It's ridiculous. But Reedus is, is probably perfectly cast for this role. And it's weird how I say cast for this role because he is playing a full-blown role. In his, it, it's like a massive mini-series huge Hollywood blockbuster. I think Kojima is going to come out with a sequel to this game. I think this may just be the front end of a world that he's building that is absolutely huge. Now let's go into the combat more because again it is one of the major hooks for one of his games for me so I'm really interested to make sure that that delivers. Now one of the things I will say is this is no Metal Gear at all and the enemies at the start of the game are extremely soft and all you get given is a rope and a fist and there's no real fear of getting the shit kicked out of you or dying but it is fun to sneak around. Again this footage is from early-ish game they do get a hell of a lot harder but it's the Troy Baker character and these crazy uh, Death Stranding monsters that are the real threat here. But it's still cool to beat the shit out of people. You see the way I nicked his bag before it even hit the ground? I'm basically a mugger now. I'm Norman Reedus the mugger. Now I wanted to talk about this, these markers and this infantry system and this online system and just how populated everything gets and just how much crap you have to deal with. If you're a fan of really efficient UI menu systems and jostling around infantry and weight and having everything stacked up correctly, then you will friggin' well love this. You know, accountants will love this game. It's, it's got a lot of lists in it. It's got a lot of ticking on, ticking off, holding down X and making sure. I'm half the time I don't know what I'm making or what materials are. And you'll also just walk up to random songs. That online aspect and that user-generated content aspect takes the immersion away from me slightly. I'm finding it hard to get used to. I don't want it, you know, I don't want graffiti all over this beautiful world. And I love the isolation idea. You do never ever see another player. And sometimes when you click the map button, I'm so used to the map button being on the big black button that I shout, that's the shout button every time I put the map on. And someone will shout back sometimes. I think that's just someone in your server who's clicked shout whilst they play that matches up with, anyway, you hear back, you hear a shout back, it's proper fucking weird. And how cool is this scene? And just, you know, blue markers all over it would just annoy me. I, I, I don't want that. I'm, I'm worried about that. But the game is growing on me hugely. I've, I've played it for about 22 hours, 25 hours. I've played it for two days. I've put two sets, two playthroughs in. I've come up to nearly 10 hours straight. So I must be enjoying myself. But I'm just trying to work out why I'm enjoying myself. I think it's this story. I think it's the incredible atmospherics and story. And I've purposely not included the cutscenes or any of that dramatic stuff because you've all seen it and you, you don't need selling on that front. The ideas of other players helping you is a really cool idea. It's sort of, it's sort of counterculture to the whole trolling thing that's going on in gaming at the moment. And one of the huge aspects of the gameplay in Death Stranding is opening up the vehicles and getting to them and allowing them to free up your time and your area of operation within your missions. They're a huge game changer and being able to build those larger bridges is amazing. Okay, so this is my take on it. I'm willing to put up with all of this weird crap that's around the user-generated content, the delivery idea, and all of those crazy notifications everywhere and having to click and like everything, and just look at the state I'm in here with my infantry. I've got all these materials that I don't know if I'm supposed to recycle them, use them, blend them into an object, whether they're precious, whether they're expensive, whether I need to take them somewhere. I'm just, it's coming out of my ears now. I don't know what the hell's going on. I really need to sit down and just go through everything and put it into my private locker and all this sort of stuff. If you're willing to deal with that, then this game is incredibly rewarding. But I will tell you one thing. Sure as shit, better have some of this stuff coming up for me soon. 
is the material from that 2017 trailer with Mads Mackelson looking fucking crazy and you know he's a warrior marine and he's got these like zombie marines around him they there is some story with Mads and the BB but it's not fleshed out yet so just fingers crossed it goes dark Nazi crazy something should happen pretty soon if you're a Kojima fan go for it it won't disappoint I've fallen in love with this game it just hasn't dawned on me yet and it will probably make it for game of the year I'll see you down there!